Hey guys, so we're just doing our caravan review. Some of you have requested for this video. Um, we've done about 30,000 on the van itself. So we know a few tips and tricks and a few good things and not so good things about the van. So we're yeah. just gonna let you guys know our opinion. Um, so if you don't know, we have the Forbes 12 Plus. It's an MDC caravan. Um, it's a little hybrid. It's got a pop top and the bed pops out as well. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we got that July last year, so it's nearly come up to a year old. Um, and as you guys know, if you've watched our YouTube, we've done eight months of travel in it. Yeah. Uh, roughly, yeah, 30,000 k's, like Monique said. And yeah, we've put it on and off-road, on the beach, um, corrugated roads. Yeah. And it's actually held up really well. Yeah. Um, so we'll just run through a few mods we made to improve it. Um, what MDC should kind of do to improve it from factory and then a few other things here and there. Yeah, and also we have had a few little issues with it, um, but MDC have been pretty helpful because um, they've got like a branch in each main state. Yeah, their, so, their warranty servicing is quite good. They've yeah. got one in pretty much every capital city yeah. um, in every state, so that's quite good and they're quite easy to deal with. Um, yeah, so we posted that we're gonna do this video and we got some questions from you guys. So, someone wanted to know how we arrange all of our stuff. Um, do we take additional things for cooking, barbecues or burners to use inside and out, or fridge freezer tips? So, we did take an additional little burner. Um, this came in handy quite a few times because we're traveling for so long. If you've got rain for a week or something like that, yep. um, just really, really bad weather. Usually it's okay. Um, but we would just set it up inside and we could cook from inside so we didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, so what we took um, was actually just a little $20 gas cooker from Bunnings or Kmart or whatever. Yeah. And that was for like boiling water, cooking stuff on a pot. If it was yucky weather out here, we'd put that in there. We also took a bigger one, which had more of a fry pan on it for frying up stuff, etc. Um, so they were both really good if it was really yucky outside, yeah. um, etc. Um, now we didn't take a web or anything. No, which I um, sort of wish we did. Yeah, the barbecue would be I handy. feel like a little baby queue is just the right size. If you've got room, I'd definitely recommend taking one next time. Yeah, um, there's a little area on the side of the van opposite the fridge. So it's perfect to put one in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely next time that would have been good. Just It's just handy. And with arranging stuff in the van too, I think it's really perfect for two people. Yeah. Um, I've seen people do it with a third smaller child but you start to get a bit crowded in there and um, it also depends on which car like if you've got a different setup in your car obviously it might make things a bit different for you yeah. but we basically kept everything in here besides our table our chair um just dirty stuff that you don't want in your van and that's about it really but everything else could fit in yeah. um so another question is so where do you store all your gear? So again, we just used everything in here. We didn't really have anything additional for clothes or anything like that. Yeah. Um, wet weather, cooking and stuff, and general setup. So yeah, we'd cook inside with the wet weather. The setup was fine. Um, we had to set up a few times in the rain. You just get the awning out and get the stabilizers down and it's basically fine. Yeah, and just on cooking in um, windy or wet weather, the kitchen is okay if the wind's blowing one way and you kind of set up to cater for that. It would block it if it's coming that way. Mm. However, if you did have a bit of wind, it would affect the burner and slow it down. Yeah, we, um, which is why we did cook inside sometimes as well. It wasn't just rain. And what you can also do with the awning is we had a side wall. Yeah. So that side wall attaches to the side. And if it is raining, you can run it off the side on an angle. So you stop the rain getting into the kitchen. Yeah. Um, I think the main thing is more wind than rain. Yeah. Um, and in that instance, if it was windy and rainy, we'd cook inside. Yeah. So how long did you get when you went off grid? Um, so with water and batteries. Okay. So I'd say water for both of us. Um, probably five days. Yeah, I was going to say. I'd say five days. Time. That includes a quick rinse off shower once a day. Yep. So every night we'd have a quick 
I don't know, minute shower. You turn the water on, turn, turn it, it off. Turn it off when you soap, put your soap up, yeah. And then turn, turn it, it back, back on. on. That's um, talking if you're going like, you can't get water for a few days. Yeah. Like you don't need to do that. But... Uh, just your cooking water, your cleaning up water, and you just try and do cleaning up once a day rather than after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Just do it at din after dinner. So you're not wasting two liters at each cup type of thing. Yeah. Um, and then drinking water, we just have our own drinking water. So we'd probably go five days. Yeah. Now the toilet as well, we'd probably go five days if I'm doing number ones <laughs> out in the bush. Um, it's just really number twos. Um, yeah. but I reckon again, probably roughly five days. And solar. Um, I'd, just, I'd do four just to be safe if you are freely using the toilet. Yeah. Um, but it does come up with a little light, so you will know when you're full. Yeah, you're full, and you are really full when that light comes on. So don't try. And honestly, the best thing I reckon about this whole van is the off-grid 12 volt system. So yeah, if you got sun for two weeks, you'll be fine. Honestly, running a fridge, running an inverter, running anything. Yeah, we um, never went. Our battery it's never got went It's got three down. solar panels on the roof with three batteries, and all you're really running is lights and a fridge and a few little things here and there. Yeah. Um, so maybe if you're in a bit of overcast weather, you might only get a couple of days, but if you got sun for a week, you'll be fine for a week. Okay. Um, mods and recommendations. Yep. So we'll show you some of the mods that we've done. Alright guys, a little handy tip we have is with your stove top, um, we labelled all the different um, styrofoam things so every time you take them out and put them back in you know where they go. Uh, also we'd have a little bag here, one to stop it from scratching on here because if you're on a bit of a dirt road or bumpy road that will rub back and forth and also when you pull up you just hang this on the side here and you put your styrofoam in there and then when you pack up you put it there and um, that way you don't lose it and it's all organised. Alright guys another little mod we had was a hand towel rail so when we pull up we'd have the kitchen out and this little clip just slips on and then you just put your um, hand towel there or your tea towel or whatever and then that way when you're washing up whatever it's just there and when you got to leave just put that off chuck it in here and you're good to go all right we also added these little rubber strips on the side bar here uh, so when your kitchen door swings down Sometimes it would hit and bang. So that just gives it a bit of protection and doesn't scratch your door or your rail. The little mod we had was uh, the dining table. So what we did is the dining table slips in here and sits here. So to store that, it's quite annoying because it's so big. But what we did is we had it here and we, we cut out this section of the storage near the wheel arch here where your um, battery and inverter and that go. Um, so that way this part slips in there. You keep your leg for the dining table in here as well. And that just sits there flush and you can still sit on there if you're not using the table. The movement we made to the van as well was adding tower rails on the back. So when your bed pops out as a back window and underneath that window would have two tower rails. Now you just get them from Bunnings and they're I think 30 bucks and um, they just suction, so they just suck onto the back. And when you fold up the bed too, they don't affect or hit anything. Um, so that's another good mod we had. All right, guys, another little mod we did was to the fridge here. So when we were in um, Northern Territory and a few hot days, um, in SA and WA as well, the fridge would get quite hot. So we'd try and leave this door open, but because this whole section is black and attracts the sun, there's not a lot of breathable air coming in. So we just went to Bunnings and I got this bit of insulated foam and I pretty much just cut it in, tried to get it as close as I could and then these straps uh, kind of hold it in. It's a little bit dodgy, but um, it worked. And I'd probably also do it on the sides as well if you're wanting to, um, just to keep it as cool as possible. Uh, especially when you're driving and the door's closed. Uh, it just helps keep it cool and ventilate issue we had uh, with the van was these drawers. It's a really good idea and I love that they're using that space but when you're on a bit of a hill like you can see now they'll just fall out um, and sometimes if you've got food freely here it will fall out too. 
Um, now we haven't come up with an idea on how to stop that yet, um, but it's something I would consider doing before you leave on your trip. Um, and it happens the other way too. If you're leaning that way and you open the inside door, they'll come through that way. Um, so just something to be considerate of. There's another little um, improvement we would make too is adding another jerry holder here. Um, so on our trip, we actually just had, so we had a, two fuels and then we had a water jerry here and it would just sit there and we just strapped it down to this one. However, if you wanted to make it a bit more uh, professional, you could just move this over or get a new one and then you'd probably be able to fit another one in there too if you just cut that off and that way you'd be able to fit two jerrys in there nicely. What supplementary setup did you have for your vehicle? As in... To do with towing, he just said if any, so anything okay. you did to your car. Um, so it's more preference of the car you have. For instance, we had a dual cab Ford Ranger. Um, so definitely you need electric brakes. Um, it's obviously legal. legal and helps you break. <laughs> yeah. um, so I recommend just a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. Um, just really easy to use, simple um, and works really well. Also, you gotta have a uh, 12 pin plug. So that just allows for charging. Now we didn't have the alternator linked up to the caravan to um, the Anderson plug. However, you can do that. Mm. Um, only reason we really didn't do it is because the solar on here is crazy. You, yeah. If you got sun um, and we're- We were in, going north. So the guy even just told us there's yeah. no, you're wasting your money. like. And, it, and they're quite expensive to get done. Yeah. Um, I've heard, I think for that Anderson plug to get run, it's about 700 bucks. So it does charge it's your car you. while you're driving. Yeah. So if you're doing a bit of yucky weather for a while and you want to make sure you're topped up, I definitely recommend that. Um, and then other than that, just make sure your suspension is good. Your rear suspension, make sure you've got the right leaves rated to the what you're carrying in the ute and your tow ball weight. Mm -hmm. um, the, if you've got a manual or a automatic transmission, uh, this little thing actually is quite heavy. So for my auto car, I got a, a transmission cooler. And yeah, that's really about it. Yep. Um, would you recommend traveling full time in a hybrid or would a full van be better? Pros and cons. Um, depends how, like depends how long how many, full time. I reckon it depends how many of you are traveling. If you've got a family, like of yeah. four or something like that, obviously a full, full van. van is going to be a lot easier for you. You can just get into camp, you're done. Yeah. Um, but if you are only doing small trips, and I mean like a few months even, that's small enough. When you come home, you got it's a bit easier to store, um, which I think some people forget. Um, Plus you get less wind drag. Yeah. Um, so the pop top comes down, so not as much wind drag. You can get into places where the trees are coming down. Yeah, we've gone into quite a few spots where full size caravans wouldn't even yeah. fit. Um, they're meant for like vans and stuff like that. And we've just squeezed in. Vans. Yeah. Um, also the back, if we rocked up to a car park, we could fit in two bays perfectly. Easy. Yeah. Where if you had another two foot on the back, you'd be sticking out and it, it's hard to get three parks it's in really a row. really hard to find parks. Like um, plus, yeah, storing, like Monique said, it's really easy to store, pack something nice and neat. Um, and it is, it's not um, a big job to do. Like, when you are living full time on the road, you don't have that much yeah. responsibility in a way. So, taking and, 10 minutes to and you just set it up. And you just too. Like, if you're doing a two yeah. or three night trip, um, you'll set up kind of fully. If you're doing one night, you'll just do the bed and the roof. Yeah. You won't do the awning, you won't you, do everything yeah, else. Yeah, you don't need to do everything. Um, and yeah, you kind of get used to it. I think a hybrid's fine for two people, yep. no matter how long. Um, obviously, people have different needs and comforts and whatnot, but yeah. Yeah, okay. So, someone asked, he's curious to know the rough kilometres and some of the roads and tracks we've taken, how the wheel alignment and suspension com components, including shocks, have held up. And we did keep the good red tires. Um, and he asked any under body damage or additional protection. Yep. So the tires, we didn't change them. We didn't change the suspension. Um, as we said at the start, we've taken it 
on the beach, off road, on corrugation, um, and yeah, 30,000 kilometres, and it's been fine. We've got a wheel alignment done once in Perth. Perth, yep. So, not too sure how many kilometres yeah. we would have done. Back and just there. to add on that, like the wheels, yeah, they're a cheap knockoff of um, Goodyear or whatever, um, and they're mud terrain. Um, but I think, honestly, they're fine. Obviously, I wouldn't pick to put them on, but I think mm. travel in them, see how you go. If you have a problem, you can always change them. You've got two spares on the back as well, so swap them yeah. out if they do break down. But honestly, we went beach, corrugated, off-road, yeah. on-road, 30,000 Ks, and, and yeah. no real Unless problem. Unless you're doing something that, you know, is totally gnarly and you, that's what you're using the van for. Or you I could mean, just get you unlucky. Could, yeah, or you're just unlucky, but... These have seriously been fine and we've taken them off road and done some pretty decent tracks with them. So yep. I reckon they're a good tire and the suspension is all fine. We haven't changed that. But again, yep. it's personal preference. It's up to you if you want to upgrade it and that sort of thing. But yeah, I'll see if we've got, I think we have one more. Oh yeah. Oh, so also just on that question, some of the roads and tracks we took. Um, hard to think back now exactly what I can tracks, etc. But we can put there. in some videos and yeah. stuff. Um, but we did, we did a couple of beaches actually on the soft sand beach. We did mm. a lot of dirt roads, a lot of corrugated. Yeah. Um, but eighty percent of it is highway. So. Yeah, which you forget because you do set up and then you go drive off into the national park or whatever. So half the time you're not even bringing the van. But, um, okay, last question. I'd like to know how you kept the fridge in the shade or out of the rain. I'm concerned about it not being under the awning. So what I touched on before about the kitchen <coughs> and we had a side awning that ran on the angle, you could also do the same thing to that side. So most of the time we wouldn't just because it's a bit of a mm -hmm. hassle. Um, and most of the time what you'd do if it was raining or wet, you just go out, grab your stuff, put it back in and it might get a few drops on it, but it's yeah. not gonna get flooded. Yeah. Um, however, if you were in downpour and you're worried about getting it wet or you just wanted to keep it out all the time, just run another side on it and it will be fine. Yeah, and with the heat as well, um, we did get some pretty hot days up near the Northern Territory and stuff like that. It got to like 42 degrees and a tip would be if you are at camp, is to just open the door because it's a black door and it really, keeps the heat in and yep. the fridge would start to struggle um that's one yeah that's probably a negative about the yeah. actual fridge enclosure it's quite you got a bit of room around it but there's no real airflow in yeah and that black in a 40 degree day up in the nt and it's always perfectly right on yep. the fridge it's the really sun. um really uh yeah it makes it work hard so it's drawing yeah. a lot of power but you're also getting a lot in your solar again um, with the Fridge, if you are set up for a long time and you do the whole annex room, yep. um, that does actually cover the fridge. Yeah. So if you are, I don't know, staying somewhere for say a month or something and you just think, oh, we're a bit concerned about the fridge, you can just set that up. It honestly takes 10 minutes once you know what yeah. you're doing and it covers the fridge and gives you a bit of room outside um, yeah, as what well. What we also did with, I'll cover it in the mods, but we did the foam insulation yeah. just to give that keep it a bit cooler as well yeah um but i feel from factory mdc should have some insulation or something around that fridge to keep yeah. it cooler but just open the door when you can if you're driving obviously you can't help that but yeah thanks everyone for your questions um about the caravan i really enjoyed answering them and getting back to you guys if you've got any more questions regarding our trip or the caravan or anything else feel free to comment them down below um, subscribe and like and keep up to our latest content.